I'm sitting here today with Fatima Burrows, the head of the Portuguese regulator, Anacom, and our agenda is going to be the 2020 digital agenda for Europe. So good afternoon, Fatima. Hello, nice to meet you. It's a great pleasure for me to be here and to have the opportunity to tell you something about the European digital agenda for 2020. And uh, mainly, I, I should say that uh, the targets for the digital agenda were established by European Commission back in 2010. And the main idea was to promote uh, connectivity in Europe. And therefore, the, there were um, established three main targets. The first one was to ensure basic broadband access to everybody in Europe by 2013. And this is already accomplished. The second target was uh, to ensure fast broadband to uh, everyone uh, by 2020. And by fast broadband, we mean a speed above 30 megabits per second. And finally, uh, the third target was to ensure that 50% of broadband subscriptions were um, subscriptions of ultra-fast broadband, which means more than 10 uh, 100 megabits per second. And this is right the big challenge for Europe, is to make sure that uh, by 2020 we will uh, achieve these targets. And the main difficulty is, uh, for sure, to ensure that these rural areas and less dense areas will be covered uh, by that time. Um, so I would say that the main challenge for the European Union right now is connectivity. Right now, the, the Commission has set um, the DSM, the Digital Single Market Strategy, that uh, is a set of 16 actions that should be done by the end of this year and that want to promote, promote the digital economy in, in the European Union. And one of these actions is the revision of the regulatory framework for telecommunications. And in this case, this is what where regulators are involved right now, we are discussing the main uh, objectives of this uh, regulatory framework review and of course this will be very important for the future of broadband in Europe. Right, so there's quite a comprehensive framework and set of targets on the broadband connectivity side. H how about on the industry policy side? Well, um, Actually, in our case, we don't deal much with uh, industry policy as regulators. However, I think that uh, the European Union and the European Commission is pretty much concerned about the impact that the digital um, has in the whole uh, economy of the European Union and how important it will be for economic growth and for innovation. Therefore, they are promoting many actions, in particular for the development of 5G. 5G is probably one of the main concerns. And uh, in this way, um, the European Commission is uh, um, establishing some partnerships with South Korea, Japan and China uh, in order to somehow um, develop 5G and to be sure that uh, by 2020, e Europe will be one of the leaders in terms of uh, 5G. And why? Because again, we understand that this will be crucial for the economy in, uh, in the European Union. So broad broadband aside, there are so many other uh, digital issues that must come across your desk. What are some of the big challenges that you're facing? Well, uh, so as uh, I mentioned to you before, connectivity is one of the issues, in particular because um, we must make sure that uh, we will avoid the digital divide. This means that we will make sure that all the uh, rural areas and less dense areas will have access to fast broadband. And this is of course a big challenge because, um, as you know, um, 
deploying um, a fast uh, broadband in these areas is very expensive and there is no economic uh, business case for private uh, investors. And uh, this means that either we should rely on state aid, so some kind of public-private uh, uh, partnerships that somehow will provide the investments for these regions, or otherwise it, it, we will have a problem. So this is in fact the big challenge. On one side, to promote investment, but at the same time uh, making sure that we will have a competitive environment because there is the risk that this investment can occur and uh, you will have a kind of local monopoly that uh, of course can be a problem but on the other side the risk is that we don't have any uh, service provider in this region so I think this is one of the most important uh, challenges that regulators are facing right now. Promote investment at the same time that you keep the balance with competition. Because something that we believe that uh, is the driver for investment is for sure competition. However, these regions must be covered and how can we ensure that this investment will indeed occur. Um, so. I think so far we are working hard in, at, uh, in Europe to make sure that uh, we will have a better connected Europe. In this part of the world, and in Southeast Asia in particular, uh, governments are also grappling with these issues of digital society. What insights or lessons have you learned that you can share with them? Well, uh, and I think that uh, mm, I was quite surprised by many uh, things that I heard today during these discussions and where I could see that uh, uh, in this part of the world we shared the best practices that we have in many other regions. So somehow um, the, the concerns are more or less the same, uh, maybe at a different level, but of course connectivity is also one of the main issues and to ensure the deployment of, uh, of uh, fast broadband networks. The, um, I, I would say that uh, what uh, is important uh, is to learn from, uh, uh, from the lessons of other countries. In particular, I believe that we could uh, be um, more efficient in the way um, we will get this investment in uh, fast broadband. In Europe, we, we put lots of pressure to have infrastructure competition. And uh, I believe that uh, m it's probably more efficient to try to find other ways like uh, co-investment or uh, infrastructure sharing in, in, instead of trying to uh, have these uh, uh, several platforms competing against each other. Uh, I think it's more uh, efficient from the economic point of view. And we have some experiences in Europe that uh, show that somehow we could try to, to get other models to, to deploy the, the networks. Uh, something that is uh, important, and it, this was the message that I, I brought today, was that uh, um, sharing the physical infrastructure, so sharing the access to ducts and poles is probably one of the best ways to get a uh, reduction on the cost of deploying uh, NGN um, networks. Great, well there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of potential uh, connectivity out there in Southeast Asia and, and those are some great ideas to help getting those people connected. Thanks very much, Fatima. Thank you.